This is now just a deserted piece of land. Littered with random bushes and a few stone pathways, it's hard to believe that this was once the site of a cutting edge industrial complex. At the start of the 20th century, Charles Roebling, son of prominent wire rope maker John Roebling, saw this plot of land as the future of the family business. On this episode of Destination Anywhere, we're going to examine the vision of Charles Roebling that became known as Kinkora Works, and also take a look at the village town he built to house his workers that still thrives today. Before we get started, if you're into history, mysteries, or other little known events, don't forget to subscribe to the Mickey Shuffle and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the action. With that out of the way, let's get to it. America was built on steel. Whether it was the huge buildings that popped up in cities across the country, the bridges that spanned once impassable rivers, or even the new roadways that relied on steel reinforcement, there was no way around the fact that America needed its steel. One of the country's early industrial pioneers was John A. Roebling, a German immigrant who set up shop in Trenton in the late 1840s, establishing what would be known as John A. Roebling's Sons Company. Roebling would design and perfect the wire rope used in several prominent projects, including the Brooklyn Bridge. Unfortunately, it was during this time on the Brooklyn Bridge that he would succumb to injury and eventually lose his life. Much of the responsibility of the project then fell to John's son, Washington Roebling, as well as Washington's wife, Emily Warren Roebling. Completed in 1883, the Brooklyn Bridge still stands as a significant development in industrial technology and also showed that even with the senior Roebling patriarch gone, the company could be trusted to continue its excellence in the field. The next great chapter in the story of the Roeblings would be written by another of John's sons, Charles Gustavus Roebling. Becoming president of the family company in 1876, Charles would oversee great production at the Trenton plant through the end of the 1800s. By the start of the 20th century, it became clear that the Roeblings would need to produce their own steel to take their company to the next level. Unfortunately, due to high land prices, building this mill in Trenton just wasn't an option. But within time, Charles was able to locate the perfect piece of land just 10 miles away. With existing rail access, as well as a perch right on the Delaware River, he would buy this piece of land for just $17,000 in 1904. With the location set, it became evident that they would need manpower, not just to build the plant, but to also work at the new location. At this point, the decision was made to build a town for the workers to live to avoid a long and costly commute each day. And this was how the village of Roebling was born. At the height of the mill's existence, sometimes called Kinkora Works due to its proximity to the nearby Kinkora rail stop, estimates say there was as many as 8,000 workers. Meanwhile, the total land area of the whole site spanned over 200 acres. Throughout the first half of the 20th century, the Roebling Company thrived, with one of its highlights being the supply of 60 million pounds of wire used in the building of San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge. As often the case, the industry was changing in post-World War II America, and the Roeblings were at a crossroads as to whether to update or sell. In 1952, they decided to sell the business to the Colorado Fuel and Iron Company. CF&I would operate the plant until they would finally close the doors of the old Concora Works in 1974, much to the dismay of many of its workers. It's been well over a hundred years since the Roebling project began, and throughout the area it's impossible not to see the reminders all around. Most of the original houses that were built for the workers still line the streets today. A few years before the Roeblings sold the company off, they started allowing workers to buy the houses to own, instead of just renting them while they worked at the mill. 
Today, many of the residents that remain are relatives of those that worked at the mill, many of them of Eastern European descent. Still overlooking the Delaware sits the Roebling Inn, looking better than ever. The building that was the general store still sits, currently unused, in the center of town. Right across the way was the first national bank used by workers and residents for several years. Both buildings have a watchful eye on them from this statue of Charles Roebling, dedicated to his honor in 2008. At the time of this shot, we're still in the COVID-19 pandemic, so obviously someone took it upon themselves to help keep the statue safe from infection. One of the most prominent features in today's village is the Roble Museum, dedicated to telling the story of the mill and the town. Originally, this building was the main gate workers would enter the mill through every day. According to the Images of America book on the town, the left side was also the jail at one point. The children of Roebling began attending this school on the other end of town in 1914. Today it serves as the elementary school. When it comes to the mill site, it's been long cleared of all buildings and equipment from its glory days. These images from the Library of Congress show what the mill looked like when it was an expired, dilapidated version of itself. By the early 1980s, the mill area joined the list of federal Superfund sites targeted for cleanup by the EPA. Over the years, there's been plenty of proposals on what to do with the area, but as of 2020, the ground still remained vacant. Taking in the vantage point from above, it's hard to believe the size of the old mill that simply doesn't exist here anymore. So what are the lessons we can learn from the village of Roebling in this steel mill that's long disappeared? Well, we know that industry is always changing, and with these changes brings new infrastructure and people looking for a new opportunity. The thing about these changes is that just as quick as something comes in, it can be gone without a trace in a matter of time. Maybe you can rip down and bulldoze the industrial complex that makes a product, but it doesn't always mean the people and their families disappear. The village of Roebling has a unique history, and as far as I can tell, it shows no signs of losing its roots. As for the mill, it's just another reminder that nothing lasts forever. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of Destination Anywhere. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and subscribe to the Mickey Shuffle on YouTube.